Thoughts are the thing that men fear the most, even more than losing their jobs or dying. Thought is mean, harmful, and terrible. When it comes to wealth, established organizations, and comfortable habits, it is cruel. Thought is both progressive and dangerous. Thought looks straight into the pit of darkness without fear. The most powerful, fleeting, and freeing thing about being human is his ability to think. It's also where all the light in the universe comes from. The scientist and philosopher Bertrand Russell, who won the Nobel Prize. Up to this point, everything that has been said is completely true. As I learned when I had an awakening, all it takes is one thought to change your whole life. With just one thought, someone could end up in jail for the rest of their life, or that thought could lead to a life full of wealth and comfort. The person thinking about something is the only one who can decide if their thoughts are bad or good and fun for them and those around them. By far, the most important thing in the world are the ideas that people come up with. There was no such thing as the United States of America before it was actually put into action. A lot of things started out as ideas in people's minds before they became real things. The course of your life is determined by the thoughts you have, and right now, you and I are both made up of all the thoughts we have had so far. At this point, that's the best we can hope for ourselves. For all of our lives, we've either done what we thought was right, or what other people thought was right. It's possible to think and have thoughts. To think is to have thoughts. Your main way of thinking is the most important thing about you. Everything else in your life is based on this one thing. How much money you make, where you live, what you wear, how much schooling you have, how you talk to people, who you marry, and how many kids you have. It's likely that a man's decision to serve in the military for a while as part of being drafted into the service was the last thing on his mind when he made his choice, unless something came to mind directly because of someone else's thought. And yet, the fact that he is being chosen is because of an idea that was come up with by the people who make decisions. This is the case since he is being called up. One great thought can put you on the path to having a lot of money. Do you think your mind could go in as many different ways as possible when you sit down and think about something on a Sunday morning or afternoon? As soon as you start coming up with new ideas, the law of numbers will start to work in your favor. You are the only one who needs to start it. Let's say you decide to spend an hour a day for six months coming up with ideas that help you learn more about your own potential as well as the wants and needs of the people you would be helping. Also, let's say you promise to do this so that you can help the people you will be helping. Do you think you could come up with five new ideas every day for six months? It was my business partner Lloyd Conan and I who worked together to make a product that has sold more than 25 million copies. We were able to do this by working together. After a little more than a month, we were able to get everything done. An idea turns into a thing in the end. In Japan, there are people who can tell 99% of the time what gender a baby chicken is by looking at its ogenitalia. Even though it might not be easy at first glance to tell the difference between male and female young chicks, they are able to do it. There is, however, no way that has been approved by scientific study that even comes close to being so accurate. Everyone does it without giving it a second thought. They need any kind of objective proof because they only have a gut feeling about which chicks will grow up to be boys and which will grow up to be girls. For some reason, they just get it. People who want to become chicken sexes can only learn by watching more experienced workers do their job and not being able to explain how they sex hands. If someone wants to become a chicken sexer, they need to learn the job by watching what more experienced workers do. You can see how powerful perception is just by the fact that I can write this. Some people think that the best way to come up with really great ideas is to let our instincts and mind work together as guides. That's an interesting option. 
you should always carry a folded piece of paper and a writing tool with you during the day. This should be something that you do without telling yourself to. A lot of the time, people get thoughts when they least expect it, like while they are walking, driving, taking a shower, or eating. As you eat, especially at breakfast and lunch, or when your thought is in this state, which I call neutral, keep an eye out for them. It gives thoughts a chance to come to the top and be heard. There's no guarantee that we'll be most creative during our designated think time. However, if we bury the problem we're trying to solve deep in our minds, it seems that a large part of our subconscious mind keeps working on it, even when we're focused on something else. It doesn't matter what problem we're trying to solve. This is still true. When it thinks it has found an answer, it waits until there is some peace and quiet before bringing it to the surface to be looked over. This lets the answer be properly evaluated. We need to write down these ideas right away so that we can give them the attention they deserve. I think our instincts can help us look into what de Chardin calls the new sphere. The new sphere is an unseen layer of human intelligence that surrounds the earth like a shield. This is something we might be able to do by thinking back to memories from a long time ago. Even though no one knows how it works, we have all seen it work for ourselves at some point in our lives. Planting a problem or question deep in the mind by first turning it every which way while making a strong conscious effort to solve it often leads to a solution coming to us out of the blue. In order to solve a problem, one must consciously turn it in every direction. This is because making a strong conscious effort to solve something causes it to move in every direction. One way to do this is to spin the problem or topic in every direction possible, of course, is a well-known answer. Why in the world didn't I see that when we turned it over in our minds using the rotisserie of our awareness? But it wasn't clear right away what was going on. People who depend on it happening expect it to happen and wait for it to happen like a ship's watch, waiting for a light in the dark seem to run into it more often than people who don't depend on it happening. If you haven't tried this idea before, you're missing out on an experience that is both very interesting and very rewarding. These Japanese chicken sexes can tell the difference between male and female chicks, and we can tell the difference between right and wrong in many situations. Women are often better at following their gut than men because they seem to be more in touch with them than men. Perhaps they've had to do this throughout history because women haven't been able to compete with men on a more basic level because they aren't as strong. This could be the reason they had to do it. Because of recent events, I bought my 11-year-old grandson lunch. As we were walking back to the van after the event, we saw a group of young men using pickaxes and shovels to destroy a gas station. While we were still on our way, we could see this action. They were only wearing shorts up to their waists and worked in thick dust clouds while using heavy picks, jackhammers and shovels to break up concrete. I stopped completely and looked at Danny. As I did so, I pointed to the younger workers and asked him if this was the kind of job he could see himself doing when he got older. After looking at them for a while, he showed that he didn't like them by shaking his head. During our trip, Danny and I were talking about how I think people whose jobs are mostly physical are not reaching their full potential because they are not mentally pushing themselves. The same is true for both men and women, men and women who think do. Through our ideas, we can think more clearly and effectively and help more people than we ever could by doing things by hand. Plus, it's better for our health, which is an extra plus. Then there's the fun of using our bodies for more enjoyable things, like tennis, golf, sailing, fishing, swimming, camping, hiking, mountain climbing, running, and working out. All of these things are more fun when we use our bodies. People who know Danny have heard that he wants to work in either science or archaeology one day. Daniel is treating the idea of college as if it were a given, even if he doesn't end up going into one of those careers. 
The way he talks about it makes it seem like a given. We can think critically about many things in life when we know more about them. Going to college isn't always necessary, but for those who put in the work to get ready for it, it can be very beneficial. William Lyon Phelps, who used to be president of Yale University, is said to have said, the people who have the most interesting images in their brains are the most interesting people. The images we see in our minds are the beliefs we hold dear, which help to shape the path our lives take. On the other hand, this could be called our art gallery. Interestingly, once we hit 40 or older, our faces often start to look like that art museum. We are told that after age 40, it is our choice how our faces look. It makes sense that the information in our books should also be in theirs. Because of this, some middle-aged or older people are beautiful and appealing, while others aren't. Sadly, we see a lot of those who aren't. The second possibility is that they have never been able to come up with a set of ideas that make them happy, give them purpose, and give them hope for the future. This is the case if they haven't been able to gather a bunch of good thoughts. Another thing that is true is that only a very small part of the community values the worth that great ideas bring to our daily lives. The most basic truth is that ideas are the most important thing in the world. While it's possible for someone to have attractive physical traits, the nothingness that comes from not having any great ideas is pretty clear to everyone. Before I went to sleep, I had a dream that my real life was full of endless happiness. Before I even opened my eyes, I knew that life was a duty. I did what I had to do, and to my surprise, it made me feel good. As I've gone on my inner journey, sticking to a certain set of values has helped me find peace and a sense of success. The poem was written by Rabindranath Tagore, an Indian artist from Kolkata. It was about an idea that was very important to him. Getting things done for the people or group we have promised our lives to is one of the most satisfying things that life has to offer. Everyone has the right to choose how they want to make a living because we live in a democracy. The moment we become adults and can take care of ourselves, we are no longer required to do that. Doing our jobs to the best of our skills should be fun for us. If it doesn't, there must be a mistake in the system somewhere else. For example, it's possible that we were given the wrong tasks to do, or we may not have given our work the proper amount of thought it needs. Question. Are we as ready as we need to be right now, given the situation we're in? It's possible that the way we see things is preventing us from seeing all the ways our work could help us advance our careers. If we don't look closely enough or be creative enough, we might not be able to see all the ways our work could help us express ourselves. We can't take advantage of the chances that are there for us because of this. Are we including the vast majority of people who seem to think they already know enough, that they will learn more while they sleep, or that the knowledge they already have will be enough to get them through the rest of their lives? It seems fair to think that we will get the best service possible while having the least amount of product available. It's like getting a shot against getting sick for a lot of people when they get their high school diploma or college degree. There is actually a name for this way of thinking about education, the vaccine hypothesis. It says that getting a license or degree is the end of official education. One college president says that as he walked toward the platform on the day of the graduation, he heard a senior telling another senior, thank God it's done. At the time, the president was also walking toward the platform. I have made up my mind that I am never going to pick up another book for as long as I live, he stated, that he had never heard anything worse than what was being said. That young man, for some strange reason, wasn't sold on the idea of going to school, and it was interesting that he didn't even know what the word commencement meant. Education is something that should never end. It should only end when we do. Still, Graduation means the start of something, not the end of something. Of course, it's the start of our freedom, 
but it's also the start of an educated education that will help us form the mental images that will make us who we are. Ideas, especially great ideas that push us to be better and bigger than we are now, are the deep-seated supports that will keep us in place even when life's stormy winds and waves crash around us. Ideas hold us up and push us to be bigger and better than we are now. They hold us down and keep us from being scared or taking a wrong turn because of convenience, fad or demagoguery. They also keep us from floating freely because they act as supports. Great ideas give us a set of senses that can pick up on lies and deception, showing us what is cheap and bad, as well as what people often call the easy buck. That is, great ideas teach us how to tell when someone is lying or not telling the truth. With the help of clever ideas, we can keep our sense of fun and enjoy the security that comes with lasting protection. Adding these kinds of ideas to our lives actually makes us laugh and smile a lot more, which makes them important parts of our routines. We know that going beyond our comfort zones and into the unknown will always mean making mistakes. We are not immune to making them, but we know that this is a normal and necessary part of the process if we want to reach our goals. That means that the ideas we support should fit with those goals. What does the word concept really mean? I have an idea is something that people say from time to time. What is it? Most likely, there is more to it than just an electrical and neurochemical reaction, even though that is what it is. An idea is formed when pieces of information that have already been learned are put together in a way that leads to a result that was not expected. When you ask everyone, shall we go to the beach? You ask them with excitement. We don't even think about the known beach for a second before making our choice. Taking one part, we put it together with already existing transportation, proper clothing, and maybe even a picnic lunch. Then we show the idea to the people we are with right now. All of this happens in the blink of an eye, even though our brains are making a lot of links at the same time. There are more possible combos that we can think of and go with what Dr. Robert Schuler calls possibility thinking, the more basic the information we have. This is why teens and young adults should think twice about the classes they say they'll never use as adults before they worry about them. We might be able to learn something from all kinds of helpful knowledge when it comes to how ideas are formed. When we give ourselves a worthwhile goal, we give our brains a problem that needs to be solved and a task that needs to be met in a way that is stimulating and helpful. The mind starts working right away deep inside the maze-like spaces of its endless potential to find the information we need to make that idea come true. It's possible that this will take a long time. People often use this amazing skill to reach simple goals. For instance, the thought of having a certain car quickly turns into a real car that we can drive and clean on lazy Sunday afternoons when the weather is nice. From the time we get the thought to the time we get in the car, turn the key and drive off. Our journey is probably very complicated or even circling, going here and then there. We should remember this as we move forward. Our process would have been a lot easier and saved us a lot of trouble if we had just paid attention to the advice that keeps coming to our minds. On the other hand, most of the time we make things harder for ourselves by not following the advice we are given only to realize later that it would have been a great way to limit the amount of work we had to do. In the end, though, the idea that was only an idea turns into sheet steel and glass, as well as leather and rubber, and it can also make your neck hurt. The idea will finally become a part of our daily lives, even though it will take us three years to pay for it. The source of all the good things that happen in our lives is this plan for reaching our goals. During its run, it is what makes our success possible. This usually doesn't involve anything more complicated than a trip to the store, a phone call, or giving a teenager instructions. After the thought phase comes the actualization phase. If our ideas get better, 
cost more or are more complicated, the process that will lead to happiness will stay the same. On the other hand, they will be scared off by fear, logic, or sometimes just plain common sense. The process that will lead to satisfaction is still the same. When we are thinking about or playing around with a great idea, other ideas can come up and take over. This means that the food idea in question will have to be put off for a year or two, or even five years or longer. This means the plan will have to be put on hold for a longer time. Yes, the way we think tells us that we have made a big leap that isn't appropriate if we want to stick to our current goals and principles. This is a problem if we want to stick to our present plans and goals. From the way we think about things, we can figure out that this is certainly the case. People usually think that being able to delay happiness for longer is a sign of growth. Because of this, it is highly suggested that the list be written down. However, this doesn't mean that none of the things on the list can be changed, as we learn more about how quickly this method helps us reach our goals, we often add levels to our list that we may not have thought were possible at first. This is happening because we are learning how quickly this kind of method helps us reach our goals. It's not unusual for us to understand how easy it is to reach our goals when we use this approach. There are millions of people who use this method every day without giving it a second thought and without knowing anything about the process. If you really understand and check a method, then you can use it for any kind of goal-related data that needs your full attention. This makes a lot of options possible. All we have to do is give it to the machine and let it take it from there. We don't need to know a lot about the system's parts in order to use it. When we try to understand and analyze every step of the working process, we often get in our own way, which limits the things we can accomplish. What it's meant to do is good. Just leave things alone for now. It's true that we can control the process of thinking, but what we think about gives us identity. It's hard to put a number on how often people don't believe in their own skills and abilities. We don't think twice about what other people have done, which means we don't usually base our goals on what other people can do, we tend to be very careful, so we like to stay within very narrow boundaries. If there is some kind of repair program going on at the moment, this is especially true because it makes the situation much more important. In other words, if we have a job, even if it's a job with few requirements, we will probably stop trying to get ready for the future. This is still true, even if our job doesn't give us many tasks. 1. Much better work with a wider range of interesting topics. 2. Any quick problem that you didn't expect to happen. I clearly remember watching a news show where people who used to work at a Navy Yard that wasn't being used were being questioned. Now that the Navy Yard has been decommissioned, what are you guys going to do with yourselves? The speaker asked the crowd. The person standing closest to him was the first to speak. The person replied, well, I guess we'll just have to wait for it to open up again. Someone else spoke up and said, I've been working in this Navy Yard for the past 25 years. I know nothing about anything. If we believe these people, then these humans were just human cattle that were kept in a single pasture and were only allowed to graze there. They could not do anything but sit there and watch their lives go by because the field was not where it used to be. In their extra time, someone could learn everything they need to know to do heart surgeries over the course of 25 years. The people in this group had 16 hours a day when they were not supposed to work. What did they do? What about the weekends and times when there are nobody to teach? Get out a calculator, some paper and some writing tools and figure out how many hours a typical worker actually spends at work each year. It will take some time. After that, take that amount of time away from the total time that person was awake. Without spending an hour a day learning something new or doing something positive, losing a job would probably not be a big deal. In fact, it might even be seen as a good thing. Also, 
why not set aside some time to think? If you are responsible for taking care of a family, you should have at least plan A ready in case something unexpected comes up. Ideally, you should have plans A, B and C. Sometimes, when they are in battle, the platoon leader has to ask himself, what if the enemy attacks at night? Are you coming up from behind? Someone who makes the most money for the family should ask, what do we do if the company I work for goes out of business or lets me go for any reason? On the weekend, as everyone was getting ready for the week, make a rough draft of the answer on that legal pad. This is the kind of thought that a husband and wife can do together or on their own, and as a result, they'll have many options for how to move forward. Because of their hard work, and while we're at it, what do you think about the idea of participating in that educational program that is based on your main interest? That person you are now will not be the same person you are in five years. You should do everything you can to make that happen. On the other hand, when the Navy Yard staff were asked questions for that TV show, they showed the same level of stupidity that they had shown 20 years before. When I was 12 years old, I liked to ask people questions and found that the adults were not even slightly better than they were when they were 15. I learned this by asking the adults questions. They have totally stopped being able to think and learn new things. Even though they were live things that reacted to simple stimuli in some way, that was all they could do. Since they knew they were getting hungry, they went on a trip around the area to find something to eat, sleep, eat, and have sexual contact in that order. The rest of the time was spent on whatever parts of their reality came up at that very moment. They laughed through every episode of Jack Benny, Fibber McGee, and Molly, which they liked listening to on the radio. They laughed, slapped their legs, and shook their heads before going back to the normal state of half-awareness they were in when they were awake. An often heard phrase during the economic downturn that began in the 1980s was, I worked for that firm for 30 years, and now I'm out of a job just like that. This means that many people lost their jobs quickly after having worked for the same company for a long time. If you listen to them talk, you might get the sense that they gave up some parts of their personal lives to make sure the company they worked for did well. This is because you might get the idea that they have broken some rules in their daily lives. There's no mention of the fact that the company paid them back for the time they spent on the job and gave them the tools they needed to become anything they planned to be in the future. These were both perks that the company gave. They weren't being held against their will or forced to do their job, so the agreement was fair and sensible. They applied for the job and were hired. They were paid enough for the work they did. They were not promised work until they hit a certain age or had a health problem that made it impossible for them to continue working. How come they didn't think about the chance of being fired and make plans for how to handle a problem that came up out of the blue? John and Elsie, two of my friends, did. After John lost his job, he and Elsie decided to sell their house in Ohio and move to Florida where they could enjoy their retirement and spend their golden years in the sun. Since he lost his job a few years ago, they might have been able to make their part-time real estate business their full-time job. As part of their business, they bought, fixed up and sold homes. If they did what they could have done, they would be very wealthy right now. What went wrong for John and Elsie was that, like many of us, they didn't think they could get done by working for themselves. The trouble was that John and Elsie didn't realize how much they could get done when they worked for themselves because of how much time he spent at the steel mill. Because John worked long hours at the steel mill, they didn't quit very often because it gave them a steady weekly income, which is something that most people don't have. But for the great majority of people, their workplaces and the labor groups they are a part of become like parents to them, and they count on them for their safety and ability to keep living. The business seems like it will be around forever because it has such big smokestacks, employs so many people, and makes so much steel or something else. All they have to do to keep their job 
is show up to work, do what they need to do, and then go home. They do not have to worry about how they will spend the rest of their lives with so many hours, year after year, decade after decade. It's okay for them to do as little as possible to let it go. How come no one wants to have a talk with these people about change? In what way do some people manage to keep themselves from the information that is useful to them? From what I can tell, they are completely wrapped in stupidity, which is then wrapped in shibboleths and myths. I know because I lived in their neighborhood at the time. As a child, my father often told me not to read that way because it would hurt my eyes badly and not be fixed. Even though reading won't hurt you, it will be good for your eyes in general, and even more so for the grey matter that is right behind them. Things are changing, but they are changing slowly but steadily. People who think are becoming more and more common over time, and this trend is likely to keep going. Nothing else is more important than thoughts and ideas in this world, and each of us has our own unique way of thinking thoughts. Being the only member of the genus Homo to have lived to this day, Homo sapiens has a huge brain that is something that is present from birth and is thought to be standard equipment. When a baby is born, we are given a beautiful living thing whose future we don't fully understand. What crazy ideas are going to come to that creature's mind? What kind of life could this young person make for themselves with those tools? Peter Drucker says that public schools were created to keep teenagers in their teens. I knew right away that Drucker knew a lot about the subject he was talking about because I was having breakfast with three high school students that morning and we were talking about it. It's clear that talking with three 17-year-old girls for 25 minutes does not count as an in-depth study. On the other hand, the people I deal with every day as a sales clerk in stores and as a customer service person on the phone don't seem to encourage me much. It is said that only 10% of fishermen catch 80% of all the fish that are caught. However, the normal person who likes fishing is not a very good fisherman. People who fish just because they love it are usually not very good at it. Not many people are very good at bowling. Not many people are very good at golf. Not many people are good at tennis, etc. An individual once said that most of us only do what we need to in order to survive without being held too accountable for our actions. This is something that has been said before. That's good enough is a term that's used a lot, but most people think it means something really bad. It's possible that this is how a lot of people live their lives in the richest country in the world, which also gives its citizens the most options. Thinking has never been a required subject at any of the public schools I have attended. This is a sad fact. A lot of the work that kids do in school is about thinking, not remembering. One, to think. Two, to think. Three, to think. Four, to think. That goes on and on, all the way up to the more higher stages of college and beyond. Unfortunately, it's not taught in our schools, even though it's the most important thing a person can do. When you consider something, you do it without giving it much thought. Everyone who works should get a tape cassette program and written materials called Your Life and Your Work after they finish a training program at their company. The show should be on a tape and the text should be written down. That course would cover most of what we're talking about here, as well as other things like basic intelligence tests, suggested savings plans, and emergency planning that are meant to help the person figure out their main area of natural ability. Because it would be part of it, this would be the case. We expect the person to find all of this interesting because it gives us choices, options, and even more possibilities which is exactly what we need to make plans that will, at least in some ways, make the most of who we are and what we can do. We have choices, options, and even more choices because it opens up so many wonderful doors of possibility for us. More options and different ways to do things. Screens would show the words, you have lost your job, to start a part of the show with the same name. This part will answer the question, 
What can you do that the community wants or needs? The community here means the whole of the United States and the rest of the free world. My good friend Derm Barrett, a business expert from Ontario, Canada, learned Spanish in such depth over the course of 800 hours that he can now teach business workshops in several Latin American countries. He is able to do this because he knows a lot about the language. Having this information gave him access to a huge range of new choices and interesting things that he could look into. There were 800 hours of work that went into it. This is pretty much the same amount of time that most people who have jobs spend on their jobs. Learning Spanish will introduce you to a very interesting and varied culture in just 20 weeks. Depending on your taste, it can do this in a way that covers everything or starts with the basics. In fact, Latin America is the only place in the world that really needs to learn about modern business. Derm Barrett was so excited and enthusiastic on the phone as he talked about how he took on the task of learning Spanish using his own time management and goal-setting methods and how amazing the experiences that followed were and are. He talked about how he had used his own ideas about how to handle his time and set goals to learn Spanish. He talked about how he had used his own ideas about how to plan his time and reach his goals to overcome the difficulty of learning Spanish. He had a lot more choices now than he did then, and the natives always admire us when we try to talk to them in their language, which is not one of ours. We might find that losing our jobs is the best thing that ever happens to us. It forces us to do something we weren't able to find the strength, imagination, or drive to do when we had a job. Look further away for better and more appealing possibilities. This is because there are more people applying for jobs than there used to be. Once we get over our shock and grief, we often find that we are now working for a company that is much more in line with our values and offers many more chances for growth than the one we left. After getting over our initial shock and sadness, we often find that our new line of work is much more to our liking. Surveys of men and women who have achieved great success have shown that the job they quit was strongly linked to their later successes. This was true before and after they were successful. The fact that they were no longer working there didn't matter if they quit on their own or because they were fired. Each member of our management team worked in a different field before coming to work for our company. They are so happy in their jobs that it fills their whole hearts. One piece of proof that supports my idea is that they are now working and making more money. They are now doing work that is much more interesting to them and as a direct result, they are making more money than they ever had before. The idea that we should not only think about things that aren't working right or could use some tweaking, but also about things that are working perfectly and making the most money is a good one in the business world and it's backed up by an interesting line of thought. This is because the thought that we should concentrate our minds on things that are working at their best and making the most money makes the most money. The best way to make money is to use what we know about business to change the way we think. In other words, you shouldn't wait until the last minute to think about something important. Instead, you should look for ways to improve and update it while it is still working at its best, because this is the way of thinking that will help us the most in the long run. If you've already been fired from your current job, it's too early to start looking for new work. When things are going well for you, when you're not stressed, and when your sense of self-worth isn't going down, think about these things. Now get out your trusty yellow legal pad and write at the top of one of the pages, I need better, more interesting, and more satisfying employment. When you're in this situation, the first thing that probably crosses your mind is, can I find it at the company where I am currently employed? What can I do for the company that I work for now that will make a contribution to the business that is more significant than the job that I am doing right now? What am I able to, and now, is a good time to start making a list of possible answers. We will later rate and order the list based on how relevant each answer is. 
after each proposal, we should ask ourselves, am I now ready to do such work? And what should I do to make sure I am adequately prepared for such work? You could also ask yourself, what is it that I can do that will help the people of this town, this state, this nation, or maybe the whole world the most? After this, there will be another list of the right answers. We'll be able to think of more ideas like this if we play around with them more. Each new idea gives birth to more ideas, like how a fish lays eggs, and this process will never end. One of the eggs also lays the groundwork for the growth of other ideas. We're getting there now. We are now using both the tools we were supposed to use and the thing we value the most. Always write everything down and never think like this without a pen and paper. A yellow pad is best. If you can, write down everything you think at all times. Without stopping, keep writing pages and pages as long as you have thoughts. Some people may find that their thoughts come to them very slowly and painfully when they think about how they think. If someone looks into how they think, they might find this out. While thinking is painful, if you keep pushing yourself and telling yourself of this, you will find that thoughts come to you more quickly and better. You can keep pushing yourself and tell yourself that thinking is a hard process to reach your goal. Don't give up as soon as you have what you might call your first interesting idea. Write down your ideas and mark them with a star, a circle or other symbols to help you find better ones. Then keep looking for new ones. There will still be new thoughts for you even after you've done all of these things. I find that the best time to get things done is early in the morning and I think you should do the same. Spend many days and weeks working on this in your free time until you have at least plan A. Move on to plan B if plan A doesn't work. You should talk to either your wife or your husband about the problems you're having to get their point of view. Because of the new opportunities you now have, you will quickly learn that you are laughing big and being as happy as a child if you aren't used to writing which is the sad truth for millions of other Americans. Please start writing on your legal pad as soon as the chance comes up. You should not fool yourself for a second into thinking that you will be able to remember all the ideas that come to mind if you are not used to writing, which is the case for many other Americans. Instead, you should write them down as soon as you think of them. There is a great way to improve your writing skills. Read any good book and then rewrite what it says. When you are writing the text, make sure you copy all the punctuation marks and pay attention to where each new paragraph starts. When you read out loud while you're writing, your speaking skills will improve as you go from page to page and word to word. At the same time, your writing will become easier to understand and sound more natural. Always have a book with you and make it a habit to look up words you don't know. There's a good chance that you'll soon be able to write without much trouble or stress. The more you work on this skill every day for 30 minutes, the better your writing will get and the easier it will be to read throughout time. Make sure that it's easy to read every single word you write. The unique way of writing that W. Somerset Morgan was greatly affected by this way of writing. During the summer break of a ten-year-old boy, I told his mother that she should read and write with him for an hour every day. I wanted to make sure that her son was getting better at reading and writing. He would have a big advantage over the other kids in his class when he went back to school in the fall, I told him. She looked at me like she wasn't sure how she would react if I offered that her child learn Chinese since he had been away for the summer. In my mind, this meant that she was considering what to say. It was clear that she wouldn't follow my advice, and it was also clear that her behaviors would not help her son get better at reading and writing. One good thing that might come from ideas is the freedom to act on our own. The power of ideas can free us from our bonds. You will finally understand that there are more options available to you and more places you can visit things that are magnificent, delicious, and enticing all at the same time make up good ideas. 
they explain why some people can make a lot more money after they leave than they did when they were working hard at the job they loved. That is, they describe why some people can make a lot more money after they leave during this 35-40 year period. They know that they can't lose their income if they save enough through a pension, so they feel like they can go after the goals and ideas they weren't brave enough to go after while they were working. They know that their income can't drop below the amount that the pension gives them. They can be sure that their income will never drop below this level because of this. That shouldn't be a problem at all when it comes to the time we have to finish our work. Some things are set in stone, but not everything. It doesn't matter to me what time it is. On the other hand, people in this situation don't often say things like, I should have done this 30 years ago. My God, just try to picture what my life would be like now if I hadn't done that. And they forget about all the fun times they could have had with you. The sad truth is that we will never be completely safe as long as we are living. It is impossible to be safe in the middle of living. That's something that can only be done at the start or end of your trip through this world. We will have to accept that our safety will depend on things that we can't always control if we want to feel safe throughout our lives. Our imaginations make insecurity into a monster with many legs and claws that breathes fire. But the truth is that insecurity is just the way things are. There is a chance that freedom comes with less security. It pushes us to depend only on ourselves, which gives us a lot of choices that help us make a life that is both interesting and difficult. Making changes to become better versions of ourselves is what fear does. It's not a bad idea at all to save up the equal of six months or a year's pay. We can also live our lives openly and on our own because of this. It gives us some time to think about what other options we have. If an idea leads to a good change, then we can say that the idea worked. The form that an idea takes has nothing to do with how good the idea is. A good idea needs to be changed. Additionally, a great way to make money doesn't have to be something very new and different in order to be successful. Even things that have already been successful because of great ideas have the potential to go even further but this potential is often ignored. With the right growth strategies, a small business in your area that is already making a profit could someday grow to the point where it makes an even bigger profit for the owner. You should never say, I'd want to get to the point where I can start taking things easy, or I'd want to get to the point where I can start relaxing about things. You can delegate boring tasks to other people, but you should still think about the future and make plans for it. You'll die if you don't. It's possible to say that someone has started to slowly and steadily decline when they can't do any of the things they used to enjoy. Things start to go badly and they start to fall apart. You'll finally be able to relax and take it easy after you die. A lot more people are likely to live long and healthy lives if they never get bored or don't have anything to do. They are farmers, which means they have to plant and gather new crops, milk new cows, and do a hundred other things that need their attention at the same time. They also have to sow new crops. There are people like this, who start the school year with a brand new class, or writers who finish a piece about one subject before going on to the next. In either case, they start their work with a new subject, and they never run out of new ideas. When they finally come to the end of their lives, their picture slowly fades away, as if it were being taken off of a movie that was playing at the theatre, but then stopped. Reading Ortea has shown us that people are the only animals on Earth who are naturally confused about their surroundings. We learned a lot from this interesting finding. It was reading that gave us the information we needed to learn this. All the other species that have only recently been born seem to be adjusting very well to their new home. They never have to think about what they are going to do because their feelings control them completely and they respond instinctively to anything that affects them. This means they don't have to think about the question, why were we stopped from reaching this certain level of development? 
we are the only species that can make our own world within the one that already exists and includes us. We are very lucky to be able to do this because the thoughts we have have such a big effect on our lives. Ideas must be some of the most important things in the world, right? Too many of us are unhappy because the lack of great ideas, not the presence of such ideas, is the main thing that shapes our lives. Blessed is the man who has found his job, was written by an author. In the past, this was no doubt a good idea. That person or thing that finds a subject that can be studied forever has a huge amount of untapped potential for their own life progress. Please allow me to stress yet another great idea for you. All of us can do tasks like these. If we haven't found it yet, the best thing we can do is keep looking for it until we do. We can't do anything else. Another great idea is that the compliments and awards we receive over the course of our lives will be directly related to how much help we have provided. We've come together to help each other for the rest of our lives in any way we can.